that controls everything. So this is actually what you're programming to tell it to do everything. And generally, it's all C-based. So then on there you have pins, right? Uh, yeah, there are. You, you have pins. input pins and output pins? Mm -hmm. So you can use, you can load a program into that and then basically Arduino. say, look for certain, when this input goes high, that triggers the logic and you have, and the logic, the program has a loop, it keeps looping and keeps looking, you can then tell it, look for these inputs. And then yeah. when certain yeah. conditions are met, change an output, which could be an LED, it could be lights, it, I mean, it could be anything, right? Yes. At that point. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, they, they have different inputs and outputs on this thing. Uh, the first two pins are for serial communication, which I don't know how much you know about that, but it's basically sending things one byte at a time, or one bit at a time, you know, on, off, on, off, on, off, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But there, there's digital ports, which are basically one or zero, basically is it on or is it off, and then there's, some, there's a couple analog ports, so things you, you can plug in like, uh, Potentiometers, so that like variable resistors or any sort of sensor you like need. A, a dial, you and want to adjust yeah, volume can, or something. You can input that into the, uh, the program and read data and interpret that however you want. And there's also uh, some, it's called spy ports. Which, I don't know how much you know about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that it's useful for sending uh, data to other either microcontrollers or. Uh, I have stuff in here. <laughs> Other chips, integrated circuits, ICs, mm -hmm. what they're called, mm -hmm. that uh, the, they control the, the LED panels on here. So I will send a, a signal through the spy ports here to transmit it to these ICs. And the ICs will uh, interpret that signal and show something on these LED panels. So I will send something like, the number five to it. <laughs> it will know that that means to turn on a specific row or a specific two LEDs within a row because it, each IC has its own specific logic to determine that. Mm -hmm. A lot of those things have spy communication or some sort of dig. I mean, there's a lot more than just that. That's one. Um, can you uh, turn to something where you can actually uh, interface with your phone and then have a receiver in your helmet so you can actually put up whatever you're texting in there? And... Yes. <laughs> that's actually exactly yes, how you can. This, works. I, this, this, that's exactly how this works, actually. Oh, that's awesome. I will sh I'm going to take it out and show you. This right here is what's called a Bluetooth module. And it has a uh, few pins. This is my shield. I I made this myself. I didn't have someone make this. You know, I soldered it all together myself. But this is, just, this is just a regulator for power. But this right here, this is the uh, transmit pin for the Bluetooth module. So I will I will connect with my phone to this module. So when when this is powered up and you turn your Bluetooth on on your phone, you will see uh, Tom Helm, which is this this specifically, because that's how I set it up. But you need a password to actually connect to it, but once you connect to it, <laughs> you can send it uh, messages in the phone numbers, whatever, and I have an app on my phone that will send it coded that, messages that will get... Is your phone called BlackBerry G14B? No, it's not powered right now. I can power it so you can see it. Like, what app do you use? I use an a, a app I made. So it's... it's. I use... Uh, there's an open source app creator. Uh, if, have you ever heard of MIT App Inventor? No. It's an open source app creator that you can invent apps on. It's really cool. But <laughs> MIT app creator. MIT app inventor. It's yeah. owned by Google now, but uh, MIT Fortnite. came up with a. Uh, and it's app for Android. Inventor. It's for Android. Yeah, it's for, for Android. For Android. And for Android. Uh, it, cool. Here you go. 
Now you should be able to see it. Okay, should be Tom Nolan. But uh, MIT came out with an app inventor, and it's based on instead of you know programming, it's well, it's programming, but instead of just typing text, it's based on <coughs> visual you know, like puzzle pieces. Mm -hmm. So you put them. You don't see it. It's sending out a signal, but you can see by the red light it's blinking. Hmm. It's called Tom. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to connect to it either way. Phone is, it's been kind of flaky from day one. <laughs> that does happen. But MIT App Inventor, you can, you, it's like puzzle pieces, and instead of you know typing anything out, you just put together a program, and if, it, if things aren't supposed to go together or don't fit together, you can't put them together. So you can put things together to make apps, and there's a lot of examples. You don't have one for J2. I see it. Each other group. J2. Java phones. I app creator. Well, the app creator runs on Java, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it's that. So the app logic will generate the code. Yes, it it it'll generate an APK that you can download onto your phone. Uh, there's there's a couple ways of doing it. There's you can connect to the computer and download directly to your phone. You can generate a uh, QR code. You can take a picture of and that will download it. Sure. Or you can just generate it right to your computer and then move it to your phone. That's the way that I use because my computer sucks. So USB <laughs> or something. Yeah. So I just I generate it on my computer and put it on my phone and then it runs. Thankfully. <laughs> it's it's it's. Uh, the, the app is pretty uh, simple. So then you're using that app to send Bluetooth to that device to control the Arduino. The Arduino yes. takes that as input and then adjusts the uh, lights. Yes, uh, the, the Arduino has uh, some programming in it to recognize that serial input has come to it and it will decode what, what has come and all the buttons that I press are sending a just an integer value. So when I send that I want it to display the scanning sequence, that will send a three. And the code will notice a three has been received and navigate to what needs to be shown on the display. Right now it's on its default. Or it's not default. And how about <laughs> yeah, that's right. So it's not doing anything. <laughs> Troubleshoot. <laughs> yeah, so these are, those are running because they have nothing to do with the Arduino, but besides that, that's probably why you can't see it. No, I could also. see Tom Hell. Hey, now it's doing something. Tom I could see it. Yeah. Couldn't connect though. Let's turn that off. <laughs> now, the Bluetooth module, did you have to write code into that or how does? How does that come in the video? <coughs> yes. Yeah. You'll have to. No. No. Grab it. We don't have to just have a server. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. We erase it. No. This, this, this Bluetooth module is a self-sustained thing. It has its own it's little chip, little here. logic on it. And all you need to do is set up its name. Oh, it's really nice. So once, uh, once you connect to it, and it's communicating on serial ports of the Arduino? Yeah, yeah. There is, there's, there's a, a multiplexing that turns the bits, or the bytes of the bits that come in serially. Mm -hmm. Got it. Well, the, this, is, this only has, uh, this is a half uh, duplex UART system, so, but <laughs> well, we can only send you know, RX or TX. We can't send them both at the same time. Okay. The makerspace? The makerspace, yeah, they have a makerspace. Yeah, this is this is actually a uh, very simple. This isn't a legitimate Arduino board. This is a knockoff Arduino. This is a sane smart Arduino. It's, it's an Arduino, but that's right. It's, it's made by a different company. It's, it's not too difficult to make an Arduino, but... Uh, this would be a genuine Arduino, but... That would be a genuine. Uh, you can tell by the uh, 
infinity symbol on it. Plus and minus. Oh. So you've got that set up with the shield. What is that? Uh, this is my helmet. Uh, it works on it works on RGB nose. What's your helmet do? Well, well, like, yeah, it's, it, uh, it makes stuff. <laughs> it just uh, displays patterns on LEDs. How do you control the? Uh, how do you control the LEDs? I, Are they I, all just running off the? Uh, and how far are you like shift registries? Like, what are you doing? Uh, they're controlled by ICs that are specific for LED control. So, so they're LED drivers. drivers. Yeah. And I send commands through my phone to the Bluetooth module, and that navigates it to the chip, which uh, communicates it to the LED driver. <laughs> the Arduino is pretty simple. It runs on uh, C code. You can run it uh, in Arduino, or there are other IDEs that you can use. Yeah, like, what do you recommend for that for development? Do you have the easiest one is the Arduino IDE. Okay. That is like a good get to know it, get to know how to do anything. And they have a huge support, support community. You can go to IRCs or they have forums online where if you have any questions or if you're having trouble with the project they're working on, you can go and you can post questions or just say, hey, this is what I did, guys, and send it to them and they'll be like, hey, that's awesome. Or you suck. You know? <laughs> 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 I've had many a question for them, and they've helped me out pretty, uh, mm -hmm. pretty extensively. So, so the presenter is not here. No, no presenter. Bring your own stuff. Birds of a Birds feather, of I think. Feather. We all, we're just all it's similar interests. <laughs> we all think the same yeah, thing. So, so. <laughs> please, if you have anything to say, say it. We're just gonna do it. Yeah. I love my self and I've been working on it for a long time. This is one of them. Two of them together? Yes, as I've done that too. I made a battleship game that uh, used two Arduinos to communicate to each other, one controlling each board of the battleship. You have little controllers that you can. What are the specs of an Arduino? Uh, memory, processor, processor speed, ports? Uh, I don't know what does it have? That's, well, there, there are actually many different types of Arduino boards. There is the Arduino Uno, which is like the simple simple one that is the that cheapest. One, this, this, is the, the basic. this is basically the entry level version of the yeah. Arduino board. You've got a significant number of digital and analog outputs. To There's the, the Lick Card Arduino, uh, which is designed to be sewable. It's, fairly, it's actually fairly water resistant, so you can launch it. This is the. Uh, There's. Uh, what was the word you have? Solable? What did you say? Solable? Yeah, you did. Water, water soluble? Okay, so, okay, it's on okay the right. Base. Yep. You can, it's designed to be sewn into clothing. Okay. So, 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 okay. And there's, there's also there's one called Mega, yeah. which has more ports for uh, whatever you want. And so, more more, more, more uh, serial pins. So, also. like wearable clothing is where that's going, right? Where you can have clothing that changes colors and stuff yeah. like that controlled by. Yeah. Um, you can pit, if you go to the Micro Center, which is where I see a ton of those, they've got a bunch of boards, they're fairly cheap there. This and they've got, they, they, so the Unos are the basic ones, but they've got the Megas, yes. they've got the Lipids. Well, I saw this uh, super, it's a micro it one, it's like it's literally that big. Because it doesn't have much power, but when the battery is bigger than the whole thing, the watch battery, battery is bigger than it, then you can really go micro. Like you wanted to build a useful for a building like this, a small robot. It's like something. you can try to interface a computer mm -hmm. with like yeah, a, yeah. a 3D CAD like, uh, uh, machine that you make. Tiny. You know, like, yeah, a 2D CAD machine. You would still need. So, what are the limitations of the Arduino? But when do you say to yourself, this crust is too much, I need to get a Raspberry Pi or something like Well, if you're going to try and do something, so like an anything audio or video based, video, that is not Arduino. It can't handle a bunch of 
much video. It can handle um, minim this minimal is just audio. That's but, what it, uh, it has a, you can doesn't have a high yourself, enough sample uh, less than to do any sort of audio processing. Yeah. So at that point, you so, want to move the very economic. So you can do simple things like a thermostat, an alarm system for your house, and well, you, it, it, your it car. can do a lot of things, but it has limitations once you get into any sort of higher processing, which would be audio and video. Anything that involves um, real time sampling or um, high, uh, oh, high, so high transfer rates. Yeah. So let's say you wanted to do, uh, I don't know, a backup right, sensor on your car. Do you want to handle that level of, sa of sampling? Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Because all the, all the backup sensor would be, would be a uh, proximity. Like, uh, so they have microwave beams and getting them back yeah. with an IR sensor. Yeah, IR sensor and a buzzer or something like that, which no problem. It's it's so interesting. Yeah, sonar. Yeah. 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 The breathalyzer one is the best fun you can have. That is so hard, a breathalyzer, because <laughs> <laughs> the, the breathalyzer sensors are ridiculous. Uh, that's unrelated. <laughs> My friend is having the hardest time. Uh, he's a lot better at it. Every, all of the stuff that I am, and there is some complicated logic that goes into a breathalyzer. <laughs> Racial profiling and all that? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... It, you it, fail. It, there's... The, the, the values of the breathalyzer sensor go on... Uh, the higher the alcohol content, the higher the temperature will be. But also, when you breathe out, the temperature goes up. So you need some sort of floating uh, matrix to know what the baseline of a hot breath is as opposed to a hot breath that's also drunk. Uh, so it needs to know that and it needs to be set before that happens. And every person reads a little bit differently, so it's pretty complicated. <laughs> you can defeat the test by blowing too fast. If it's a bad breath measure. Well, sounds yeah, like it's a thing. There's, it's pretty, uh, Most breath measures are... I don't think that's They're restricted. You can't possibly blow faster than not allowed. No. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah floor blower. Yeah. I was gonna say, wouldn't it be better just to control the flow of the air? So you had to fall slow down, then you just had to chamber off to the side and just sit there and then check the air. Yeah, you still need to take into consideration the heat of the breath, which is changing time. Right. Humidity so content might help. Every air it's, 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 it's a weird. It's a weird process. It's not you've got a fever. Yeah. It's, it's funky. That's all I know. Apparently, I have a point. Do you know what the sampling rate is on the I.O.? It depends uh, on what kind of chip that you get. Yeah. It depends the sensor. There are many different ones. Sparkfun is the one that produces the most. Any idea what the, the worst one is? You're talking about the Arduino? Something made yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the no. sampling rate on the Arduino? <laughs> yeah. That's what he wants to know. I actually knew that about five minutes ago. I'm so sorry. I could find out for you. Any idea what range it's in? Hundreds per second, thousands per second? Hundreds. Depends on the clock cycle. Still plenty. The clock cycle is not, doesn't have a very big range. Right. But yeah. plenty, plenty for virtual and the digital thing you would do in the real world. Well, yeah, and it depends. If you want to add, if you want to connect to something analog, it's really, basically, the Arduino is nothing more than really just something that you're, you can you can put a lot of uh, commands on it, but really it's it's just a it's just a head go between between the hardware that you're trying to attach to it sure. and uh, whatever it is that you're trying to make. Like you can put um, you can put the um, translation software for the commands that you want to run uh, a two D mill. You know, with the separate motors and stuff like that. that. Stuff's not that complicated at all. Right. Um, but it would have to be schooled from your computer. I think the you know, the kind of talk together if you want to. Yeah. No, you said C uh, is the programming language. Uh, when you progress C or C plus plus, is there a difference? Yeah. There's, yes. There's, there is a difference. I have no idea. I know it's a stupid question. That's not here though. Question. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's. <laughs> Like different generations. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a strange thing to explain. Uh, basically, more features were added for C was the base, and then C++ was, all right, there's some things we can do better. So they added C++, the compiler, to make it easier so that when you write a command in C++, it'll understand it. If you write that same command in C, it won't. 
So it's it's more just making things easier. Class, it was object oriented stuff that came in with C plus <coughs> plus. I think C early C, C didn't have have any of that stuff. C plus plus is rich with all that stuff. C you had to define scopes and everything a lot more literally, whereas C++ you can just write things and then... C you can write stuff out. outside of the uh, ranges of the... What, oh yeah. C you can do all sorts yeah. of fun stuff. <laughs> Programming out training wheels, <laughs> yeah. baby. That's the good old days. I think C++ stops There's that. There's nothing stopping you from writing over your own operating system. Although when you theory, if you have a C, C++ compiler, then you can still write yeah, whatever, you you whatever you want, whenever you want, wherever you want. It's just... Yeah. <laughs> the only the thing you can do can into, uh, no, no, into, I mean, like, uh, I see the quadricopters all over the place, I just wanted to be specific. Um, the, the one thing that limited me with the sampling rate and everything was I made a, uh, a color organ, which it, it takes frequencies and sam it samples sound and takes in frequencies and then displays on LEDs. So. When there's a lot of bass, then these LEDs light up more and more, and then travel. Well, the red speed. LEDs would be for bass, and uh, the yes. purple ones would be for uh, travel. Exactly, exactly. So it has to sample and, and determine what frequency it is, and then display on some LEDs. Right. That, that uh, pushed the limits of what the other could do, because uh, and the, the sound would happen. Before the, the display, the yeah. infrared LEDs would be for your subwoofers. <laughs> yeah. You can put your hand up and feel the. You can't. You can't make many channels, you know, uh, with specific frequencies. Whereas in other uh, other environments, like uh, Texas Instruments has another a board uh, similar to Arduino. Uh, I don't know what it's called right now, but it has a higher a higher sampling rate. You can do a lot more with audio. And stuff. But if you had some hardware, like in between, or something like that. if you had some hardware in between the microphone and the Arduino that did some breakdown, you know what I'm saying? Some preprocessing, I mean, pre, like the pre that, the, yeah, and, and then gave you, yeah, yeah then gave you yeah. the digital input for that. Then you'd be, you wouldn't have that limitation because you're using additional well, hardware. Way, it, still, it can still only take in so much data at one time because of the sampling. So either way, I can't. Uh, display or take in data fast enough to know um, anything like that. I, I need to be able to take things in fast enough to know everything. Sure. So you could run a number of Arduinos in yeah, parallel. There, there, yeah, there is a, uh, a fast Fourier uh, transform uh, Actually, library that library. we use for it. Really? Yeah. There's, there's a library that was written in C that yeah. someone uh, transformed specifically for Arduino. That I used, okay, and uh, some sign in order to transform the sound. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know that that might be, more, like that, but <laughs> does anybody have any projects that they're thinking about or started? I think I'm going to make the 3x3 LED cube. Just like that fun. <laughs> yeah. I like I like anything involving LEDs. I saw the instructions for um, that you can do mass message just by doing the current the other way. Since LEDs only go one way, so if you just you put that you put two LEDs basically in the same connection, just go this way, then it goes to one, it's high the other way, it goes to the other. Yeah, I mean there's a limitation to that also. Yeah, you can make something fast. <laughs> Yeah, well, the the Arduino can't uh, can't handle many many uh, LEDs on its own. It needs some sort of interface between them, whether it be a uh, transistor or another IC. It will it will generally control an IC that is powered by a separate source. Would an Arduino be cost effective for a simple temperature con temperature sensing circuit that shuts off power to a critical component? Temperature gets too high. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Would it be cost effective or other people lose the digits? What you're, what you're asking to do would only require the 18 mega chip with the Arduino from a loaded on it and a simple comparator. 
Yeah. You, you wouldn't even need a microcontroller for something like that, actually. No, a simple analog circuit is going to do that. If the resistance yeah, got if over a certain amount, if it, if it doesn't involve a lot of high computation, if it's just something as like if the temperature's too hot, there there are uh, sensors and stuff like that that you can use that don't actually need a microcontroller. Yeah, yeah. from a couple or a, a so it can, relay. That can be turned off and on. Yeah, no programming involved. But if there's some like sort of history, turn back like on and turn back on when it cools down. Sure. But let's Absolutely. let's say you wanted to be able to adjust the temperature at which that happened. Yes. Like you wanted to be, then you could use the Arduino because then you could change the program to say if it's at this, you know, 85 degrees Celsius, then change it as opposed to this. Yeah. You'd have the flexibility right. then. Yeah, sure. you could use the Arduino, you could use any sort of... Uh, you could take in both the room temperature and the temperature that it was measuring. Or if you want to <coughs> drive a cooling based on, on the yeah. temperature of the right. yeah. control fan yeah. speed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. <laughs> it's more more flexibility. Oh yeah, there's yeah. there's a lot of flexibility if you integrate any sort of mic controller. Arduino or not. <laughs> Actually I have been thinking about doing a proximity sensor using an idea for bicyclists and motorcycles so you could tell if somebody was coming up behind you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Would it like beep or I don't know. I don't know whether it's I would have an electric the shock. Flare up right <laughs> or whether I uh, alert the driver. Maybe a little both. Would this be as by the yeah. motorcyclists and bicyclists, or would it be used to detect motorcyclists and bicyclists? No, it would be used by the motorcyclists and the bicyclists so that it would alert people behind them and making the taillights maybe go bright.